Okay, can we go now to the Port Melville? Um, you know, wow, all of a sudden we have a port and nobody got told. Um, apparently the Federal Environment Department didn't know about it, nor did they permit it. I understand that there was an investigation ordered by the Minister into um, the matter. Can you tell me what that investigation has concluded? So just to, just to correct some facts there, Senator, before we kick off, we, we were aware that there was a, a port at Port Melville. Um, it's associated with the, the large forestry development in the Tiwi Islands, so that mm -hmm. it has been there for a significant number of years. So it's, it was first developed at some stage in or around 2003. Uh, we were also aware back in 2013 that there was some activity at that site. Mm -hmm. So we, we did have some visibility over what was going on mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the Tiwi Islands in that respect. Um, we were asked by the Minister, and I haven't got the exact date, it was in or around early May to, to investigate it as a matter of priority. So we took a number of officers off of other cases to resolve this matter quite quickly. Mm -hmm. We had a look at the terrestrial impacts on the site that had occurred to date, and then we also had a look at, based on the information that we could we could get from the proponent and from the and from the state from the from the, from the territory, we looked at what potential impacts might continue to occur if that development is finished and is made mm -hmm. operational. We we formed a view that the terrestrial impacts to date hadn't had in, in, any significant impacts on matters of national environmental significance but that the operational aspects of a port and the expansion of a marine supply base from that location had the potential to significantly impact on matters of national water significance and that needed to be referred for assessment. Has that occurred? No, we're currently discussing the contents of the referral with the company. Um, we prefer to spend a bit of time before referral making sure the company provides us with all the relevant information. That then enables the company and the department to go through a a more streamlined process rather than they supply inadequate information early on and then we have to continue to seek more information on the way through. So we're investing a little bit of time over this couple of weeks to make sure all the referral information is, is quite clear and is provided and it means we can, we can do an adequate assessment. Senator, do you think it's... I add, the, the proponent has written to the department indicating their intention to refer this project to us for assessment. Okay. And, and think Senator, I, I think because there has been some confusion about this issue, it is very important to uh, be crystal clear that the existing facilities uh, that are there uh, were, um, uh, were inspected uh, back in uh, 2013 uh, and uh, it was deemed that approval was not required for the construction or placement of that, uh, uh, of that floating wharf pontoon at that time for the purposes uh, that, uh, uh, that were being undertaken. Uh, obviously in relation to uh, new activities and new requirements, uh, the government's made it quite clear as to what obligations would have to be fulfilled. Okay, so you're currently discussing with the proponent the scope of the referral and how they will then submit that to you. What, is there any scope for that approval not to be issued given that the thing already exists? So the operational aspects of the, of the, the marine supply base there, there would be. Um, my colleagues could probably provide more detail about the assessment process, but the what, assessment yeah, what process... Could do what, is what I'm trying to get at. What could we do? Yeah. So most of our concerns on that site, and I've got to be a little bit careful because we haven't, haven't received a referral yet, so the matter's still technically open, even though we've got a commitment from the, the company to refer. We would go through and would look at the sorts of things that could occur on that site which may significantly impact on our nationally protected matter, so turtles, dugongs, mm -hmm. blue whales... Uh, habitat for turtles and dugongs, so seagrass and things like that. Uh, our primary concerns from our preliminary investigation were also around a large fuel bunkering facility. So making sure that the company has the relevant assessments and mitigation activities around those matters and those activities so that they're not going to have unacceptable impacts on our protected matters. So you, you might look at things like what are the sorts of plans and processes and emergency procedures go in place around the the operation of the fuel facility. What are your what are your methods for making sure there's biosecurity considerations for things coming in and out of the port? Um, you would you would generally look at the sorts of things around shipping movements, 
where are the sensitive areas, where do you want the ships to go, not to go, how are you going to look at those, those sorts of impacts. And then in the back end, with under conditions and approvals and post-approval management plans, how are you going to measure the impacts, mitigate them, and adaptively manage them over time? Mm. So there's there's okay. plenty of scope to, the, to manage this thank activity. You. Thank you. That's helpful. With with this fuel storage, though, given that the storage tanks, I understand, have already been installed, but they could, would you require could you require them to be moved, for example? It just does seem that you're coming in incredibly late in the piece. So we we would require the the management of that fuel storage. So if it was built to Australian standards, it would have a range of things already in place that would manage the, the, the risks to that. It may be that through the assessment process, they might need to make some changes to the construction or to the operation of it. For example, for fuel storage, you would generally ensure that you have a bunding around the fuel storage which could contain a significant spill. So if they haven't done that, then they might need to go and do that before they can operationalise that fuel storage. Mm. So, there's still a, there's still a range of of opportunities to intervene. So can I just clarify? Senator, just on that, I mean, um, the, the, the office is giving a generalised and hypothetical yes, answer to a generalised question. Hasn't been so, made. Thank yep. you. Um, so just to clarify, because Mr Geddes, you said something and then the minister added something that perhaps I missed, perhaps you did say it and I didn't jot it down. You said that the, you were aware that there was a port and it was developed in 2003. Mm -hmm. but then the minister added in that someone had inspected in 2013 and decided no approval was required. So, so we had officers that went that, that went and had a look in 2013. So our preliminary so investigation... As well as in early May Sen of this Sen year. Senator, I think in terms of the, the, the timelines you were just talking about, um, uh, there was, as I understand it, back in 2001, approval to establish the hardwood plantations uh, 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 on Western Melville Island. In 2003, construction of port facilities which were in 2007 significantly damaged by a cyclone event. Um, and essentially, uh, there were no operational port facilities subsequent to that uh, 2007 cyclone event. Okay. Uh, in uh, 2000, 2013, um, there were repairs to the wharf, which I understand involved putting in a new floating wharf pontoon. Um, uh, they, uh, they were, uh, I am advised, inspected by officers of the department um, in October 2013, mm -hmm. um, who determined that approval was uh, not necessary and that the activities being undertaken at the wharf uh, uh, have not been in contravention of the EPBC Act. And it's important to note that those activities allow the traditional owners uh, uh, on Tiwi to export wood chips, uh, uh, which um, uh, of course uh, is the intended purpose of the plantations that were uh, were mm -hmm. uh, built there in 2001 and without that there are significant management difficulties in terms of managing the landscape and the biodiversity yep, yep. without um, effective management of those plantations and the ability to um, uh, for the traditional owners of course uh, generate uh, what I'm told is up to 200 million dollars in revenue and uh, and create um, uh, significant numbers around 100 local jobs um, now if there are uh, what we've been very clear on, though, is that uh, if, uh, if there is an expansion of activity uh, of those port operations to operate more as a uh, marine supply base than simply as the export facility uh, for those wood chips around that plantation, then that may trigger certain activities, uh, and the department has been very clear to the proponents in that, which is what officials have been um, mostly talking about, and I guess is the the current matter, but it is important to understand the history, uh, that there was a port there for a while, a yeah, cyclone knocked you. it out, a new port put in, which was all found to be compliant with the EPBC Act. It's, uh, it's only more recent activities uh, that have brought question around the matter, uh, which the department's uh, been engaged in. Thank you. So there was two investigations, yep. one, one in 2013 and one in early May. Well, one that started in late 2014 and finished in early May. Finish. Oh, I thought you said the, the minister was. The minister had asked for the investigation in early May. As a matter of priority, so we escalated so the priority of that to resolve. So it had been underway from before then, but the minister said, "Hurry up." We had some. We had some awareness right. of it, and we were receiving information from the state and from the proponent over that period. Okay, started in late 2014, and how was the genesis of it starting? Who asked? So for it to we start? we became aware of that matter from a a question on notice from Senator Paris. Right. 
So the Northern Territory Government didn't mention that they were seeking to, that someone was seeking to expand the activities at the port. That required one of us here to mention it to you, the department. We had had some, some knowledge of activities at the site, and that's why we inspected in 2013. Uh, I suppose the, the new piece of information that came to us in 2000 and late 2014 was around the fuel bunkering, yeah. and, and that triggered a, a new investigation. Okay, and the Northern Territory Government hadn't informed you that that was now a new activity being, under, being undertaken on the site? Um, I'd have to take that one on notice, Senator. It, it starts to get quite detailed. That's why we're in estimates. That's before the first investigation. The official has taken it on notice, Senator Waters. Okay.